Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be proving that negative 1 is equal to 1. And make sure to stick with the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I'm going to prove that negative 1 is equal to 1. So let's first start off with negative 1 is equal to negative 1. This is a true statement because any number is equal to itself, right? So now, negative 1, this is the same thing as negative 1 to the power of 1. Any number to the power of 1 is also equal to itself. So negative 1 to the power of 1, that's also equal to negative 1. And 1, this is the same thing as 2 over 2. So if I replace 1 with 2 over 2, I get negative 1 to the power of 2 over 2 is equal to negative 1. And 2 over 2, again, it's 1, so it's the same thing as negative 1 to the power of 1. Now, 2 over 2, this is the same thing as 2 times 1 half. So now, if I replace 2 over 2 with 2 times 1 half, I get negative 1 to the power of 2 times 1 half is equal to negative 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m to the power of n. So in this case, m is equal to 2 and n is equal to 1 half. So now I have negative 1 to the power of 2 to the power of 1 half. This is equal to negative 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of 1 half, this is the same thing as the square root of a. So this is the same thing as Well, first off, negative 1 squared, that's simply equal to 1, right? So now I have the square root of 1 is equal to negative 1. And the square root of 1, that's simply equal to 1. So now I have 1 is equal to negative 1. So I just proved to you guys that 1 is equal to negative 1. All right, so I have x to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 2. So right here, I want to find the value of x. So for my solution, first start with x to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 2. Now, if you notice here, a very obvious solution to this would simply be 2, because we already have 2 over here. And these two are going to be the same. So x equals 2 is an obvious solution because if I plug this in, I get 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 2 to the power of 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 2 to the power of 2 is again is 4. So this is an obvious solution. So we already have one solution based upon first glance. However, this isn't the only solution to this problem. So to find all our solutions to this problem, Let's actually go ahead and solve this equation. So I first start with x to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 2. Now I'm going to divide both sides by x to the power of 2. So then these two cancel out, and now I'm going to be left with x to the power of x over x to the power of 2 is equal to 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So in this case, x to the power of x over x to the power of 2 is going to equal x to the power of x minus 2, which is equal to 1. Now, if I take the natural log, or in other words, ln on both sides, I get ln x to the power of x minus 2 is equal to ln 1. 
Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front. So this is going to equal b times ln a. So in this case, I can move x minus 2 to the front. So it's going to equal x minus 2 times ln x is equal to ln 1, which is the same thing as 0. Now, this is going to give me two equations. I have x minus 2 is equal to 0, and I also have ln x is equal to 0. So for x minus 2 equals 0, I simply add 2 on both sides. These two cancel out, and I have x is equal to 2. And this was a solution we already got based upon first glance. However, now for ln x equals 0, x has to, well, to solve this, I'm going to first take e to the power of on both sides. So now I have e to the power of ln x is equal to e to the power of 0. Now e and ln, these two cancel out. So for my left-hand side, I have x is equal to e to the power of 0 is 1. That's anything to the power of 0 is 1. So my two solutions are 2 and 1. All right, so I have 2 to the power of 19 minus 2 to the power of 18. So to solve this problem, I'm going to first rewrite 19 here as 18 plus 1. So now I have 2 to the power of 18 plus 1 minus 2 to the power of 18. Now, an important property of exponents is that if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, 2 to the power of 18 plus 1, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 18 times 2 to the power of 1. Now I have minus 2 to the power of 18. Now, if I go ahead and factor out 2 to the power of 18 from this, I get 2 to the power of 18 times well, 2 to the power of 18 times 2 to the power of 1 divided by 2 to the power of 18, simply 2 to the power of 1, and negative 2 to the power of 18 divided by 2 to the power of 18 is negative 1. Now, 2 to the power of 1 is the same thing as 2, so I have 2 to the power of 18 times 2 minus 1, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So I have 2 to the power of 18 times 1, which is simply equal to 2 to the power of 18. So now, let's go ahead and actually solve for the exact value of 2 to the power of 18. Well, I'm going to rewrite this as 2 to the power of 9 times 2, because 18 is equal to 9 times 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So in this case, 2 to the power of 9 times 2, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 9 to the power of 2. Now, 2 to the power of 9 is equal to 512. So now I have 512 to the power of 2. And this is the same thing as 500 plus 12 to the power of 2, which is the same thing as 500 plus 12 times 500 plus 12. Now, to solve this, I'm going to go ahead and distribute 500 to 500 plus 12, so now I have 500 times 500 plus 500 times 12. Now I'm going to do the same thing with 12. So now I have 12 times 500 plus 12 times 12. Now 500 times 500, that's going to be 250,000 plus 500 times 12, that is going to be 6,000. Again, I have 12 times 500, which is 6,000, plus 12 times 12, which is 144. Now I have 250,000 plus 6,000 plus 6,000 is 12,000 plus 144. 250,000 plus 12,000 is going to be 262,000 plus 144 is 262,144. So this is my answer.